Ashley with Good Vibrations 3D and today we are reviewing the Best G T220S FDM printer. I want to start by saying that I'm not being paid for this interview. They reached out to me via Instagram and asked if I would be interested in checking this printer out and making a video for them. I said sure, so let's get started. So this is a semi-DIY printer. What that means is that you need to screw the gantry onto the base. It's pretty simple. The base is somewhat heavy, so for me, I actually needed to ask a friend to help me hold it in place while I screwed four M5 screws in. The printer should have come with four of the screws. It did not. I had extras, so I was okay. And then also you need to plug in three switches uh, behind the stepper motor and then down here. This one did take me a second to get into place, but once I had it in, everything was working just fine. The print volume on this is actually really nice. It's 220 by 220 by 250. If you are familiar with the Ender 3 by, by Creality, it's actually pretty similar in print size. The Ender 3, I think, is 235. So very similar build volume. And you also have a heated print bed, which if you're printing with PLA like I normally do, that's gonna be really awesome. It also comes with a removable, flexible base, which is also really awesome when you're trying to pop a print off the bed. So your home screen is a touch sensitive color screen, which is actually really nice. You've got your um, move print head. So you can move it in any direction you want and home it as well. Because we're going to be loading filament, I actually want to move my nozzle up just a little bit. And then you can also preheat from here. I'm already getting set up to load some filament, so I already preheated the nozzle. And if you just want to preheat the extruder, like if you're loading or unloading filament, you can do that on the extrude screen. Recovery mode is wicked awesome if you've ever had the power go out midway through a print. This actually saves your spot, and once you turn the power, once the power comes back on, you can actually go back to your print. And then your file screen reads from an SD card in the machine that it comes with. And then here you have your bed leveling, which you just use a piece of paper to level the bed. I will say that the leveling knobs here are kind of small. I'll probably try to print something off that's a little bit bigger because for me it was just annoying to have to figure out these small knobs, but overall it's pretty solid. So when you're setting up your printer for the first time, you are going to have to plug in these switches here and here, and then also here. This front one was the one that I didn't push in all the way, so when I first tried to set up my printer, uh, this axis was not moving at all. Also. The micro switch here during shipping uh, shifted and I did have to reposition it and tighten it so that the nozzle didn't bang into the print bed, but that was a really easy fix. This printer does come with a filament runout sensor. Uh, what this does is it stops your print if you run out of filament, which keeps you from coming home to a half printed item. So we're going to load some filament and get a print going. This particular model uses Bowden tubing. My preference is actually a direct drive, but that's okay. Um, Bowden tubing is really easy to come by. It works well. That's just my personal preference. Okay, so I do have a file preloaded onto the SD card. I'm just going to do a benchy. So let me home this printer because I already leveled it. And let's preheat. I'm gonna go up to 210. And from what I understand, this actually does preheat pretty quickly. All right, so our print bed is heated up. Our nozzle is close to being ready. So let's go to the files, find my Benchy, click OK and start. All right, 
so let's just go over um, some of the accessories that come with this printer. It does come with an SD card that is set up with Cura already built in, and then an SD card reader. Also comes with three hex wrenches. You will need all three of these while you're setting up your printer. It is supposed to come with M5 screws. I didn't get any of those, but like I said, I had extras. And snips. Um, feel like every single printer comes with these, but I use them all the time. Uh, also comes with several spare nozzles and an extra fuse, and then a wrench. Uh, remember when you're changing the nozzle on your printer, you want to make sure that the nozzle is actually heated up. You do not want to take off or put on a cold nozzle. It will not work. Also comes with some sample PLA. I haven't tried this out, but I will. I'll let you know how it works. Um, also comes with a user manual and a warranty. The warranty I think is good for six months. I forgot to tell you guys, when they shipped this to me, if you again are familiar with Creality printers and the racing stripes, they actually used that same material to hold the nozzle in place so that it didn't shift around while it was shipping and I really liked that. It felt like everything was packed really well. Overall, I really like this printer. Uh, the price point for this is estimated to be somewhere around $250. I don't know when they're releasing it and I don't know where they're going to sell it, but that's kind of what, they t what they've told me. When I know that, I will post it uh, underneath. But for $250, bucks, we will see when the Benchy's done. I'm actually pretty happy with this. There are a couple mods I'm going to put into place. Like I said, I'm going to try to print some new... Uh, leveling knobs. I'll probably also set this up with OctoPrint just because I don't want to be moving the SD card in and out every single time I want to do a new type of print. But if you've done that before with a Raspberry Pi, you know it's actually not too terribly difficult. I also really like that it has the filament runout sensor and recovery. Again, all of us have had experiences where you've either run out of filament or the power's gone out. Probably the power run going out is the most annoying thing. But this allows you to kind of save your previous spot. One of my favorite things about this printer is actually how quiet it is. This is probably one of the most quiet 3D printers I've ever heard. Uh, I could easily have this going in my living room and still be napping on the sofa. The way the print bed is moving, it's quiet. The extruder isn't making any clicking sounds. I'm really impressed with just how quiet everything is. All right, so our Benchy is done. It took about an hour and a half to print. It looks pretty good. We're gonna pop it off the print bed and then take a closer look. So this is the Benchy. It turned out really good. Um, the overhangs look good. I don't see any stringing. Like I said, I'm really impressed with this printer. For 250 bucks, it's solid. It's well made. It is quality, like I said, it's quiet. It uses settings that you're already familiar with. I'm gonna say this is a go.